This is fantastic. A linear driven Star Wars game from Visual Games? The developers of Dead Space? Thank you EA. Now I can finally stop being disappointed that Star Wars 1313 was cancelled. Remember Star Wars 1313? Didn't that look incredible? Don't worry. EA wouldn't do such a thing. Look, they even hired Amy Hennig, the creative lead behind Uncharted, to show how committed they are. I mean, Visual Games and Amy Hennig working on a story-driven adventure in the Star Wars universe? That's a match made in heaven. EA hired Hennig for a reason, right? Man, I really misjudged EA. EA is evil. EA treats its developers like shit. What nonsense. Guys, Amy Hennig and Visceral Games are developing an Uncharted inspired Star Wars game. I can't wait to see. What the fuck is that? <sighs> e fucking A. What am I supposed to say? EA strikes again. Another talented developer fell victim to EA's unrelenting, soulless money printing machine. Visual Games is yet another dead body on the giant pile of carelessly ditched developers. I'm not the first one to convey my outrage about this. Jim Sterling already shouted a couple of fuck yous in EA's direction, so I thought one more won't hurt. I've said this before to any independent developers who might be offered contracts with Electronic Arts. If you care about the future of your company, don't sign that fucking paper. You are signing your studio's death warrant. It's bad enough that EA shut down a fantastic studio like Visual. We also have to mourn for what in all likelihood would have been a great Star Wars game that had the potential to separate itself from the usual online multiplayer. What's really insulting about EA's statement is the way certain things are phrased. EA takes us for a fool. We know exactly that the design of Visual's Star Wars game isn't just going to be pivoted, as EA likes to put it. The development isn't shifting to another developer and the game design isn't pivoted in order to shift the game to another developer. The original vision of Amy Hennig and Visceral should still play a significant role, but it clearly doesn't. EA wants to create an experience that players will want to come back to and enjoy for a long time to come, and a Star Wars game adventure of greater depth and breadth to explore. Everyone who can expose this misleading marketing talk can easily identify the true message behind this vague statement. In reality, it reads something like this. A few years ago, we hired Amy Hennig to develop a linear story-focused Star Wars game. As we observed the trends in the industry and actually managed to implement our shady business practices, you know, paying full price for half a game or shoving pay to win microtransactions in our games, we suddenly realized that we couldn't do any of this greedy bullshit in a linear single player game. We decided to throw the efforts of Visual Games and Hennig in the trash, in total disregard for the sweat and tears they already put into the game. Fuck you guys, faint regards, EA. The sad thing is, EA isn't the only one to blame. The gaming community bears part of the blame. From a business standpoint, EA's decision makes perfect sense. EA made great profit with its disgusting attitude towards developers and gamers. The yearly increasing profit confirms that. At the end of the day, every company wants to increase its revenue. But you can increase your profit and honor the wishes of your fans. It's not mutually exclusive. EA is making a shit ton of money. Even if Amy Hennig's Star Wars game wouldn't have sold as well as the next Battlefront, the game still would have been a success. And even if it wouldn't have been, that's an insignificant loss a company like EA can take. Take Sony for instance. Sony is still taking risks and actually catering to the wishes of the fans where it can. 
Last Guardian wasn't a profitable game. It ran through development hell for almost a decade and sold barely more than 1 million copies. The calculated logical business decision would have been to cancel The Last Guardian. Because people like Shuhei Yoshida tried their best to respect the die-hard PlayStation fans, Last Guardian saw the light of day regardless. Granted. Sony is in a convenient position because the PS4 continues to sell like sliced bread. But I hope you get my point. As long as your business grows and the money keeps piling up, throw your fans a bone every now and then, even if it entails a minute loss. Anyway, I'm not here to argue from the position of a businessman. I'm here as someone who values the artistic potential of video games and the hard work of developers like Visceral who are known for captivating single player experiences. Sony isn't a saint. Call me a Sony pony or a fanboy, I don't give a shit. But one reason why PlayStation is still my platform of choice is the story-driven, oftentimes linear focus of PlayStation exclusives, especially in regards to Sony's first-party studios. God of War, Spider-Man, Days Gone, Detroit, Death Stranding, Horizon, Bloodborne, Uncharted and The Last of Us Part II all have something in common. Their focus lies on creating a polished, memorable single player experience and by and large abstain from forced multiplayer and microtransaction components. I'm just scared that games like Uncharted, Dead Space, Hellblade or The Last of Us to name just a few are slowly fading away. Every genre has its unique benefits. Unfortunately, most people value quantity over quality nowadays and are unwilling to pay $60 for a game that doesn't at least offer 50 to 100 hours of playtime. Everything beneath that is wasted. This attitude is responsible for the overwhelming dominance of open world games and MMOs. And I've nothing against titles like Destiny, Battlefield and Assassin's Creed. All I'm saying is diversity is important. We should maintain a balance. The benefits of story focused linear games belong to this diversity. At this point, EA embodies everything I hate about the games industry. Everything that's lazy and wrong. Why would you hire Amy Hennig to make a Star Wars game with Visceral Games when you never intended to create a linear driven action adventure game? I mean, what the fuck? Amy Hennig is known for making great linear driven games and Visceral Games is known for making great linear driven games. If they never were supposed to create such a game, then why did you assemble a team that has all the merits to do exactly that? The writer and director of Uncharted combined with the developer of Dead Space. What did you expect? That's like hiring Kojima to make a game only to wonder that the final product is batshit crazy. You don't want a naked Norman Reedus, invisible babies and an abstruse title? Don't hire Kojima because this is what he does. At this point I feel horrible for Amy Hennig. Uncharted 3 is the last game she finished. Since 2011 she stumbled into one cancelled project after the next. She left her baby Uncharted 4 mid-production and now the same shit happened at Visceral but even worse because ultimately Uncharted 4 got made and was a great game even if it differed from Hennig's original vision. Her Star Wars project with Visceral on the other hand is dead for good. It seems like EA is on an unrelenting mission. A mission to sort out and destroy as many talented developers as it can find. Taking a look at the body count EA left behind and the shady business practices it unleashed on the video game market, it is no wonder EA tends to be the defending champion of the title most hated or evil company of the year. Throughout the last console generation, people talked about EA in the same fashion as you would talk about a bloodthirsty serial killer or the grim reaper of the video game industry, always ready to suck out the lifeblood of developers and gamers alike. You wanna hear something crazy? When everyone was shitting on EA, I actually defended some of their decisions. Now that I said it out loud, defend may be too strong of a word. Let's say I tended to remind people of the great games that were released under the EA banner. Yeah sure, 
They are greedy bastards, but every now and then we get something like Dead Space, Mirror's Edge, Mass Effect and Dragon Age, I would say. Despite its flaws, EA was responsible for some of the absolute best games I've ever played. Dead Space, Mass Effect and Dragon Age were unique, brave and creative endeavors, unlike the slightly altered FIFA we got every year. All I'm saying is, EA did some good last console generation. This is why I was unwilling to join the hateful EA rants. Well, congratulations EA. You did it. Your aggressive money milking strategies, complete indifference for hardworking developers like Visceral, boring as E3 conferences and above all else, utter destruction of every single game people were willing to give you the last tiny bit of respect you deserved, you finally made me say it. Fuck you. Fuck you guys. If you didn't already deserve the title most hated video game company last console generation, now you most certainly do. There's nothing I could say to refute that claim. We get it. Just take a look at the graveyard of wasted potential EA left behind. How about handing one of the most prestigious and beloved video game series of the last console generation to a developer unable to deliver the quality standard people have come to expect from a Mass Effect game? Bioware Montreal had to deal with one of the worst shitstorms in recent video game memory, despite the fact that Andromeda's lack of polish was mostly due to EA's lukewarm support. EA simply didn't provide the studio with the budget, manpower and time it needed. Dead Space started as a genuine survival horror title with claustrophobic atmosphere and transformed into whatever Dead Space 3 was supposed to add to the horror genre. Mirror's Edge Catalyst got pressed into a genre in which it absolutely didn't belong. The open world approach goes completely against the fast paced, energetic nature of the first game. The linearity of the first Mirror's Edge was a strength, not a weakness. Who could forget Titanfall 2? A great, surprising game that was sent out to die a shameful death, crushed by the video game behemoths Battlefield and Call of Duty. Positioning a promising game like Titanfall 2 right between the release dates of the two biggest video game franchises was a fatal but more importantly unnecessary mistake. EA could have chosen a different release window, instead Titanfall 2 was never given a fair chance to begin with. Battlefront looked phenomenal. Apparently EA didn't care about anything else though. The graphical fidelity and Star Wars brand weren't enough to hide the fact that Battlefront was a half-finished game, designed as a massive cash grab, forcing the gaming community to spend a little fortune in the form of DLCs for content that should have been there from the start. And here we are two years later. Believe it or not, Star Wars Battlefront 2 actually looks like a full-fledged game and even promises free DLC content. But it's the A we are talking about after all. So needless to say, there's a catch. Microtransactions, what else? I could go on forever, but I think you got the message. EA is the devil. Games like A Way Out and Fee are nothing more but an attempt to hide behind a smokescreen of candid appreciation for indie developers and studios like Visual Games, which cater to the interests of gamers like me. Gamers who enjoy linear-driven, single-player experiences in the vein of Uncharted or The Last of Us. By now it is blatantly obvious that EA doesn't give a shit about its developers. EA doesn't truly believe in games like A Way Out, Mass Effect Andromeda or Mirror's Edge Catalyst. For EA, such games are a good excuse to pretend like it cares about the artistic value of video games. Hard-working developers are reduced to a ham-fisted attempt to cover up EA's dark, rotten soul. We get it. Please forgive my litter rant. Usually I try to avoid uploading overly emotional responses, but I had to get this off my chest. EA's behavior bothered me for quite some time and now they really dropped the ball. Anyway, if you have something to say, feel free to share your opinion in the comment section below.